This is a lecture about the movie Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. We are going to uh, talk about the movie. We're going to uh, talk about the setting of the movie. What does the title mean? Uh, discuss the main characters, the conflicts of the movie, uh, what themes could be found in this movie, and talk a bit about symbolism. This is a lecture about the movie, not about the written text. After this lecture, and after having seen the movie and maybe studied it, you should be able to discuss the movie uh, and analyze it to some extent. So, uh, the movie is a historical drama from 2007. It is based on real documentation and a book which was published by D. Brown in 1970. The setting includes um, the Black Hills of South Dakota, uh, forests, trees, and you can see teepees with Indians, uh, rich plains, wildlife, nature and the bison and you can also see uh, United States northeast of the United States and the capital of Washington DC you can see the president you can see fine buildings schools and people in the Senate and Congress wearing uh, uh, nice clothes and you can also see Indian reservations, which are kind of primitive, like camps. This picture to the right is of a newer Indian reservation. The title, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, it refers to the death of a people. Death means bury a people, that is the heart. So this means that the Indian culture, lifestyle, way of life, it lasted thousands of years in America, what we call America, but it ended after the brutal battle, or slaughter if you will, which uh, took place at uh, the place called the Wounded Knee. The Battle of Wounded Knee was the last great battle fought between the American government and the American Indians. The American government slaughtered the Indians mercilessly. After that battle, Indians were placed on reservations, not allowed to hunt for their food anymore, not allowed to control their own lives, and they were treated really as second-class citizens by the US government. The US government wanted to buy the Indians' land but the Indians did not believe that land could be bought nor sold. The Indians wanted to hunt bison for food, but the US government denied them rights to hunt. The chief, Sitting Bull, stood up for the Indian values and way of life, but he was killed at Wounded Knee. With their guns and artillery, the US government was just too strong for the Indians, who had bows and arrows. Sitting Bull said, I shall not be here, I shall rise and pass, bury my heart at wounded knee. This means that he knew that he would die, and the Indian way of life and values were going to die with him at the battle of wounded knee. You can see the real persons here. Ohayesa, or Charles Eastman, as was the name he took, uh, he cared about the Indian people, sort of his own people, but uh, um, he, he was an Indian warrior, Ohayesa, before he became a doctor. Sitting Bull uh, is portrayed as a stubborn person, a leader, a great leader, a warrior. He wanted to preserve the Indian way of life. And he was the last Indian chief to put down his rifle. And he's seen as a heroic person. And Senator Dawes, 
He wanted to buy the Indians' land. He informed the Indians of the words of the great father, the president. Elaine is a teacher. She taught poetry, wrote poetry. She helped the Indians. Uh, she took care of them. And she married Charles. And they had a family together with uh, children. Charles decided to become a part of the white man's world, but he never felt like one of them. He helped Senator Dawes with his plan to buy land from the Indians and place them on reservations. But he lived to regret this decision, to assist with this uh, for the rest of his life. When he saw the unfair and sometimes brutal way this was done, and what this actually meant for the Indians and their way of life. Sitting Bull wanted to preserve the Indian way of life and culture, which the US government wanted to destroy because they saw it as disrupting peace and prosperity. Sitting Bull's tribe was attacked by a heavily armed white men. He and his people were slaughtered, and the Indian way of life was more or less wiped out. So Sitting Bull failed in both protecting the physical lives of his people and their heritage. We can find several themes in the movie, such as uh, culture clash. It means that the different cultures will often fight each other. The US government tried to assimilate the Indians into the American society by forcing them to move and by putting them in boarding schools and reservations. Another theme is um, treating a people like the, the whites treated the Indians uh, is just plain wrong, ethically seen. The US government made promises and treaties with the Indians and they broke them. And you can also find a theme uh, standing up for what you believe in. Well, it's important to stand up for what you're believing. Sitting Bull did this, and so he, he lived with integrity. And he stored the integrity of the entire Indian population so that both are remembered today rather than being forgotten like the others who surrendered. Many Native Americans today strive to preserve their traditions, their identity and culture. You can also point to other themes in this movie. Maybe you can find some on yourself. The feather can be seen many times in the movie. Uh, it is symbolizing Charles' Indian origins and the conflict he felt, having left the world or culture or people that he really belonged to.